Hi, I'm Digby and this is James and we're from Plug In Everything. And for the first episode of Show Me Everything, we're reviewing our new release, Cartoon Mobler, which has just hit the shelves. Uh, but before James gets too much into it, I just wanted to quickly share with everybody how we first got started. Uh, James and I work together a lot in post-production uh, animation and, and MoGraph uh, videos and content. And at our studio here, uh, when James is working for us, he tries to come up with the most fast and effective ways to solve uh, animation solutions inside of After Effects. Um, so across many of the jobs, uh, James decided to bring to life Plug-in Everything, which allowed him to develop specific plugins that solved problems he had. Uh, and then earlier this year, I decided to jump on board with James to continue the growth of the business. And our first plugin released for this year is Cartoon Mobler, which is a solution uh, to a project we were working on for PayPal last year. So I'll pass back over to James to talk more about how it came about. So for the um, PayPal job, I wanted to try and create a motion trail and um, using the built-in plugins there's there's not much available but there is an effect called echo which I'm sure you've all tried to use <laughs> with much pain and suffering so here we have uh, echo at the default settings and I've just got so negative <laughs> <laughs> I've just got some I've just got a spinning X and we can see the one trail that echo is generating here so what we want is number of echoes let's make it a hundred um, we want to set the echo operator to composite in back so that it's just sort of like a solid and the echo may be a lot less, maybe 0 0.5. At the moment we can see the edges are really crunchy so what we need to do is at the start, even though the layer is not moving, it's generating 100 copies of it so it's the edges are 100 times crunchier than they ought to be. Mm. So what you would need to do is tie this to the velocity of the rotation but to do that manually, essentially, we would go no samples at the start. When it's fully in motion, we would want 100 copies, 100 samples, and then towards the end, back to zero. It seems very tedious. Yeah. Um, if you tie it to the velocity of the rotation, it's a bit easier, but then you, you have to then compare the rotation, the position, the scale, if you're animating them all. Thankfully, we're just doing... Ugh rotation on this one but still it's um very tedious we still have crunchy edges maybe we didn't need a hundred samples um maybe 50 would have so how would you solve the crunchy edges less samples but for some reason the if we lower the number of echoes we're then getting less it almost looks like the time echo and so i really don't even know how echo works but <laughs> It's difficult, so let's remove Echo That's a good and let's, point. No let's do a better... Works. Yeah, I don't think the guy who made Echo knows how it works. <laughs> let's add in Cartoon Mobler. And this is the, um, the latest beta release, um, which has a few awesome new features. So the only thing we need to worry about with this one is how long we want the trail, and we just drag a slider for that. So now we've got our rotation with a really long trail that was probably way more than we need, and that's why it's taking a long time to render. So let's just go two and a half thousand. That's cool. So kind of a one click solution to echo. And the um, edges are already the edges 10 are all, times smoother. Yes, the yeah. edges are always nice. Echo can be used and it can create a cool effect. It's just that it takes a lot longer to get there. So that's why we created Cartoon Mobler. So when, when we released the first version of Cartoon Mobler, we had some customers essentially <laughs> complaining which would be the nice way of putting it uh that it didn't um, follow curvaceous movements or be or bezier paths um which was quite frustrating um so we went back to the drawing board and uh, we came up with a solution that uh, allows that to be achieved very very quickly and the the effect is is freaking cool um, so James will just take us through how easy that is because originally the the plugin was essentially following the shortest path. So if you had a, an S curve as the animation, it would the the motion blur or the cartoon mode blur plugin would still generate like a, a straight uh, animation trail rather than following. Yeah, it was your it was animation lazy and taking the shortest. It was very path. lazy, uh, like we were in making the first version of the plugin. Um, no, 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 do you mean we were lazy? The plugin was... <laughs> no, no, I was saying we were lazy. No, okay. just... So I've got an animation here where I've got the paths 
have Bezier curves attached to them and we can see that there. I love the plugin Ease and Wiz and if we applied Expo to that we can see that it literally just ignores the Bezier curve. So it has a feature called Curvaceous which when applied should be following the... okay it's not working. <laughs> um, it, it's supposed to work like that. I'll just apply. So now with Curvaceous ticked the um, Ease yeah. and Wiz honors that uh, curve. So the first version of Cartoon Mobile didn't honor the curve, but customers were complaining, as we said, and now we have um, it working with that. So I'll just change the fill and increase the shutter angle, and we'll be able to see that indeed it's now following the curve. And you can see in that was like five seconds, and you already get a really cool looking animation. Because most most people when they animate don't just use straight lines. They want to. Yeah, make it fancy, and they want to add easing and everything. And and so the next the next question you're probably asking is if you've already got something animating, can you parent another object to that that has Cartoon Mobile applied? Yeah. So people said the plugin was useless because um, for complex animations you will always be using parented animation, and the first version again did not mm. work with that. It actually just went crazy. <laughs> so now if we parent this to a null object. Yep. Uh, and we were to say rotate that, animate the rotation. Yep. Um, now that works perfectly. There's no troubles. It's yeah. <laughs> it's it's that's working. crazy. And um, and then you can add the regular effect of the gradient fill. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so we could add gradient to if that if you wanted, wanted to, to be that. fancy. And and here we can see we're not um, the sampling isn't correct, but we could increase the samples here. So yeah, now we're using the gradient fill and it looks epic. And then we had another customer complain that it didn't work on an adjustment layer. And we told them to fuck off. And we haven't even addressed that problem. It doesn't work on adjustment layers still. <laughs> Doesn't it? No, it does. Oh, it does. Okay, good. <laughs> Let's add an adjustment layer here. And we'll just cut that same effect and apply it to the adjustment layer. By what? default, nothing happens because... The adjustment layer isn't transforming. Um, it's the, the layer itself is transforming. So then we can set the motion source to the X and now it's working. And then if we had multiple X's and they were transforming differently, now it's working for every layer underneath producing the cool. cartoon mobile. So, so essentially what would be the main reason you would want to use it as an adjustment layer rather than adding it individually? Um, so like... If you have 20 layers that you want to have the effect applied to, obviously if you want each of those 20 layers to have, to have a different color mm. a motion trail, then you should apply it individually. Mm. But it's just more efficient to have uh, one adjustment layer and tweak the settings. Because normally if you have one effect applied to 20 layers and you're like, oh, I want the trail to be longer, well now you need to update mm. the shutter angle on every single one of them, which is, you can do via expressions, but you have to set that up. Um, and this is handy because you've got it all in one layer and you can have literally infinite layers. It's cool underneath. how it, even when it crosses over, how you're getting that interaction. Oh, that's true. If we, if we had this separated onto each one individually, it wouldn't be doing that. Whichever layer is on top would, kind of dominates. would dominate it and the other one would just be underneath. So there's so, another good... Oh yeah, that's, a, that's something that, I hadn't even thought of. Yeah. So could you could you screen the top layer? Would that then you could, um, but then that start would, getting some that weird. would screen the layer itself, yeah. so that would look bad. Depending on what's going to well on the back, depending on the back. So that well, looks good, but then if you had a yeah. background that was red, then you'd be like, you're oh, going to look gross. It will take on that. No, oh, it's kind of cool actually. Uh. Shit, <laughs> it was supposed to look bad. So, but that is the main reason. So there's two reasons, which is. Um, speed and ease if you're happy to have everything adopt the same parameters underneath the adjustment layer mm. which we all know and also the interactivity between uh, the objects actually is I guess interactive yeah they're all in the unified space yeah um, so which you don't get if they're all individually mm. doing it whichever layer is on top is just going to ruin the others so that's another good reason to have an adjustment layer so to wrap it up we just wanted to share with you the new features that we're planning to put in. Um, and if I knew all of the terminology, I would tell you them. So James is going to do that. Sure. So with Echo, uh, it's got this decay feature here, which um, 
decays each sample depending on its it's about the only cool thing of echo yeah so it, it this actually looks like motion blur but the good thing about echo is you can extend it way past the default 720 degrees that the after effects shutter can go um so that's a cool feature you currently can't do that in cartoon mobile we do have an opacity slider but it's global mm. so if you lower it it's it's the same opacity for every sample so it'd be cool if we had an opacity per sample so that it was essentially what echo was doing a decay mm. feature and then once we're doing that well why don't we add in like uh, color correction per sample you can rotate the hue shift the hue per sample mm. uh, change the gamma and also even a blur per sample so it look like the old version is becoming more and more out of focus the older those along. samples are so it's kind of like a time trail effect so we're thinking to add those uh, in the next version which should enable even more creative craziness that well, it sounds like it would just be a party from the 70s really uh so uh make sure you this is like the classic like youtube sign up make sure you <laughs> subscribe to our newsletter no, like comment and subscribe oh. one like equals one respect one respect uh head to the web page which will be in the information below uh super super awesome twitter facebook instagram and you can keep up to date with uh what we've currently got coming out uh, updated versions and also new and free plugins that we're planning on releasing there's some cool stuff for 2018 uh, these videos we'll be doing for each plugin and maybe sporadically as well looking at uh, other content that's coming out in the industry, potentially reviewing some other Viewing people's work, party plugins, and yeah, yep. and other people's animation work. Uh, and this show will evolve as it as it grows. So consider this our first very awkward, cut jointed. Uh, as I said, Digby, James, plug in everything, buy it, buy our products. <laughs>